Hello! Today I'm going to be bringing you five of the most nostalgic backrooms levels from the past three and a half years. These are levels that give you that old backrooms feeling and they really tickle the liminal space and nostalgia bone just perfectly. If you enjoy long videos like this, please leave a like and comment what other ones I should do. I'm always looking to make more. With all that said, love y'all, sit back and relax, and get ready to hear some classic Backrooms levels. So the Pool Rooms is a level from the fandom, actually, and it's level 37. It's split up into a couple different zones, which I'll get into later, and they all vary depending on how safe they are or how dangerous they are. The first zone I want to talk about is called the Safe Zone, shocker, and it's classified as a Class Zero difficulty and is devoid of anything that could possibly hurt you. Unless you, like, hate water or something, then I don't know what to tell you. This zone looks like a maze of white tiled walls and rooms that are filled at varying depths of room temperature water. The water itself is clean and could theoretically be consumed, but uh, I don't know if I would want to try that, to be honest with you. The entire level has no actual light source, no light fixtures in the ceilings, and the only light that comes into the level is from some random windows that just shine bright light into the halls and then from there it reflects off into the water. This level's day-night cycle has it day for 16 hours and night for 8 hours and during those day hours the windows will appear perfectly white so you won't be able to see outside of them you'll just be able to see like a white sheet of light and at nighttime they'll turn completely black. The deeper you go into this level, the deeper the water itself gets and the less light gets there. A weird thing about the safe zone's walls is that they actually damper and dampen any sound from entering or moving around. And the only sound you'll be able to hear is the water splashing from your legs or feet or, you know, if you're swimming, you'll hear that water. Earlier, I said that this part of the level was completely safe and devoid of entities, which is mostly true, except there's been some reports of wanderers hearing weird noises from an unknown source, and sometimes they've even said that something was watching them from the shadows? That's uh, pretty creepy. The main theory is that people have been hearing sounds coming from the danger zone, since the walls in the danger zone actually amplify sound unlike the walls of the safe zone, which dampen sound. The tiles here in the safe zone actually have another weird quirk, where they reflect light from the windows into different colors, like neon colors, which then can be reflected into the water, and thereby changes the color of the water to your eyes. Pretty trippy. The last thing about this zone is that there's actually almond water that drips down from the ceiling, which leads some people to believe that there's a huge store of almond water above this part of the level, which would be pretty cool, but again, it's just a theory. The next part of the level is actually called the Main Center, which, as its name suggests, is just the exact center location of the level, and it looks like a huge room with water on the floor, just like the safe zone, except this time, there's actually platforms that are above the water that people can stand on, which is nice if you're tired of getting wet. This area typically is like a landmark to wanderers and a good place to meet up or a good place to rest. There's even food and other supplies here too, and these supplies will actually refill themselves if they're all taken every hour or so. But the most important thing about this zone is that it has the ability to restore your sanity, which if you know anything about the back rooms, sanity is very important. The last zone for the pool rooms is called the Danger Zone, and, well, it's dangerous. It's classified as a Class 4 difficulty, and it's very unsafe and very unsecure, and it's pretty much exactly like the safe zone, except the walls are dark blue and black, and not white, and they're more cramped and claustrophobic. It's also extremely dark here, and in some cases, it's actually pitch black, and like I said earlier, the tiles amplify every sound, so it's really disorienting, because everything echoes really loudly. The water here is also worse than before, because earlier you could theoretically drink the water, but if you drink the water here, you'll get severe stomach aches. On top of all that, this section actually makes your sanity drop really quickly, which obviously isn't good. But yeah, that's it for the danger zone. 
It's like the first safe zone, but dangerous. There are actually three colonies that call this level home. The first one is called the Lifeguards, which pretty much is a group of around 90 members who live in that main area where the platforms are. They refuse to trade with outsiders, but they will save anyone's life who's drowning or seems to be struggling in any way. The next group is called the Swimmers, and they have around 60 members, and literally they just teach people how to swim around the level. Like, that's it. The last group is called the Republic, and they live in the danger zone. They're armed, but they're friendly, and they'll protect you from any hostile entities that might be attacking. Speaking of entities, the entities here are the typical ones, like smilers, skin stealers, and wretches. But there's one more called the Glitchton, which is a really rare entity, but it's also very dangerous. They look like a humanoid skeleton, but they have neon bones, and also they have a metal arm. They're very aggressive when attacking, and their main threat that they cause is that they can hear very well, so if you're splashing around or whatever, they'll probably come to you. And they wear clothing that's been dipped in liquid silence, so you can't hear them, which is terrifyingly creepy. Like, imagine just being there, and turning around, and seeing a skeleton with a metal arm just standing right behind you. Creepy. To enter this level, you can noclip into level negative 33, or you can noclip into the bottom of an empty pool from level 823, if you want to come here. And to exit, you can find a cylinder stairway and walk up those stairs to be sent to level negative 33, or you can just noclip into any wall that you can in the safe zone area to be sent to level 7. Easy peasy. Alright, now that I've talked about the level itself, I want to show you this pool room's found footage that was inspired by this level entry. The footage comes from a YouTuber named Jared Pike. It's a cool name because, you know, my name's Jared too. This footage is actually really cool and I recommend you go check it out for yourself if you want to watch the entire thing. But in the video, we can see the safe zone area with the white tiles and shallowish water. And we can also see the main room area with the platforms. We don't get any footage inside of the danger zone, but we can see the entrances to the danger zone where it starts to get dark. And you can tell that this footage was based off of the pictures from the Phantom's entry, which is always pretty cool. And uh, I think it's really dope. And you should definitely go check out Jared's channel because this found footage is really cool. And I don't know, it's something about this water liminal space in the back rooms that just seems cool. And seeing it, you know, brought to life in found footage form is just pretty dope. Level 154 is classified as a class 5 survival difficulty and is very much unsafe, unsecure, and actually has a low entity count despite what you might think. Because the entities here are not what's actually dangerous. It's the level itself. Because this is the level that's home to something called the laser game. More on what that is in a few minutes. I'm going to explain what the level looks like now. The level is physically made up of looping and winding hallways that go on forever. The hallways are made of stone and they're all the exact same color, which is pitch black. And the only light in the level comes from these really dingy colored lights in the ceiling that don't even really put off light, kind of just a random glow. However, the main attraction of this level is the big open rooms where the laser game is played. Now these rooms all have doors with a specific symbol painted on them, and I'll get into what they mean in a second. But the entire level can be separated into two distinct parts, the corridors and the laser rooms. Obviously the corridors are just the black stone hallways that I just talked about, and the laser rooms are, <laughs> well, the laser rooms. The temperature in the hallway corridors is typically just lukewarm until you get closer to a laser room because then it starts to get hot. So that's kind of how you can decide if you're close or not or where you should go. It's also heavily recommended to carry a flashlight and maybe some powder or breadcrumbs with you so you can mark your path and not get lost in these infinite hallways because those are the only ways that you can escape the level, and if you don't find them, you're just gonna be stuck here forever. So you gotta find those labeled doors because there's no water, food, or supplies on this level at all. 
So now I'm going to talk about the laser rooms themselves. Obviously, the laser rooms are where the laser games are located. Behind each of those doors with those symbols on them, there's huge open rooms with a bunch of lasers pointing across it. Yeah, it's like some Mission Impossible stuff. Past these lasers, there's always a pedestal with a pendant on top of it. And this pendant is going to be in the same shape as the shape on the door. That's how they're coded together. You can probably guess where this is going, but your goal is to get to that pendant by crawling, jumping, or rolling under these lasers at all costs without getting hit. And there's also a time limit for each room. Now obviously in most of these rooms you can hit a laser or get grazed by a laser and you'll be semi-okay, just a little bit burnt, but you probably wouldn't want to in some of them because the lasers are more powerful there. So the goal is for when you and whoever you're with, if you're with somebody, when you both get to the pendant, you immediately grab it and touch it, both of you. And then you'll be teleported out of the laser room and back to level 1, which is where you came from. And that's how you get out of this level. And then once you touch it, you get to keep the pendant. The one you took will be immediately replaced by an identical one. Now this all sounds, you know, pretty easy, right? Just avoid the lasers, touch the pendant, and you'll be fine. Well... That's not really the case with all the rooms, which I'm going to get into the individual room types right now. The first room is called the line room, which has a straight blue line painted on the door. The lasers inside of this specific room stay still and they don't move, but they are the most powerful out of all the lasers because they just stay in one spot and they just beam constantly. Obviously, they can cause bad injuries and burns if touched, so don't. The line room has a lot more time on the clock than the other rooms typically. It starts a 60 second countdown the exact moment you walk into the room, so you don't have that much time. If you can't make it to the pedestal with the pendant in time, then the pendant will retract into the floor and you won't be able to get it. The lasers will turn off and then the door will unlock and you'll have to walk out. Now obviously, you might think that you get off the hook too easily, but you gotta think. Getting a pendant is the only way to get out of this level. So now that you didn't get the pendant, you're trapped here again and you have to go find another room and they're not even common, they're pretty rare. So you should never fail, you should try your hardest here. Now the line room is one of the easiest rooms because the lasers don't move and it's not that big of a space. So if you see it, I recommend going for it. Now the next room is called the circle room, which has a yellow circle painted on its door. And just like the line room, when you walk inside the room, the door slams behind you and locks itself. And you're stuck here until you win or until you lose. However, the lasers here are actually always moving, although they're moving pretty slowly, but they're still moving. And this circle room does not have a timer, which is nice. On top of that, the room itself is pretty small and the lasers themselves are pretty weak. They're actually the weakest out of all the rooms, so getting hit by one would just mean a minor scrape. You can even block these specific lasers with a thick non-reflective object, like a chair or a stool or something, you know, something sturdy. But this is the only room that that would work on because of how weak the lasers are. Now the next room after this is the triangle room, which has a red triangle painted on its door, and this is the smallest of all the rooms because it's the most dangerous. This room has a puzzle inside of it that's made up of seven prisms that have to be aligned in a certain order to block the lasers, which is cool if you're smart. If you're not, you might be screwed. If you come into the triangle room, you can't even leave until the prism is solved. And there's no timer, so you could just be stuck in there. So for this reason, it's not recommended to try this room at all, because some people might not be smart enough to solve the puzzles. The second to last room is the square room, and it's marked with a green square on the door. This room is seemingly impossible to escape through, because the lasers are so close together that humans just can't squeeze through without getting hurt. But apparently, some people have actually made it through, but no one knows how they did it, so there's gotta be some like cheat or some puzzle to solve, but so far, no one knows how to get through. Don't go in a square room, alright? 
Now the last room is called the Pentagon Room, which has a pink pentagon painted on its door. And this one is by far the easiest for pretty much everyone, depending on the wanderer. It involves running, like sprinting. When you step foot in the Pentagon Room, behind you, the laser will start, and it will start to move forward. So the second you open that door, you gotta start running as fast as you can to the end of the room where the pedestal is, because that laser is gonna be going, and if you get caught by that laser wall, man, it's over. And this room is pretty much just a test of physical strength and agility. It's pretty much like the storm in Fortnite, just moving right behind you constantly, but faster. But that being said, if you trust in yourself to run at all, this is definitely the easiest room to escape the level in. Now to enter this level, there's only one way, and it's from following these colored bulbs in random areas of level 1 that match the colors of the pendants. And then you'll be led to the entrance to here. And you can only exit the level by touching and grabbing the pendants past one of the lasers in the laser rooms. Which will take you back to level 1 where you came from. I guess the cool thing is you can keep the pendant as kind of a trophy. It's not magic or anything, but it's pretty cool. level 0.2 aka the remodeled mess level 0.2 is classified as a class 3 and was actually created by a group in the backrooms called the backrooms remodeling company it looks like a revamped version of level 0 with new stuff to make it not as gross as level 0 the carpet is red and dry here unlike the wet carpet of level 0 and the walls are white instead of yellow there's also working Wi-Fi and electrical outlets, and even a random bathroom every so often. This is one of the only sub-levels or levels in general that's been created wholly by a group, so that makes it pretty unique. Apparently their goal was to recreate the first level to make it more habitable. However, this level does have some weird stuff that happens in it once you get there. The second you step foot in the level, it starts to crumble and fall apart, kind of like it's destroying itself on purpose. The ceiling will start to fall, the tiles from the ceilings will just fall right on top of you, the walls will break in half and crumble over, and behind the walls is what looks to be like an old abandoned house. Now this self-destruction will stop when the reaction reaches the entrance back to level zero, and the level will then instantly go back to how it was. Red carpet and white walls. Nice. No one knows if the level was purposefully made to fall apart by the remodeling company or if it's just unstable kinda. Sounds unstable to me. There are no bases here and no outposts obviously, and to enter the level you just have to continue walking on the regular level 0 until the carpet starts to get drier and drier and the walls start to look like they're under construction. Then you'll notice a door to this sub-level, so just go through that door and you'll be here. To exit you have to go right back where you came in to get back to level zero. I actually kind of like this one. It's kind of like an alternate version of level zero, which is cool because it's cleaner and not as crazy. And I really like the fact that it's not stable and can be destroyed by itself. Pretty cool to me. So the next sub level today is called level 1.5, AKA inverted. This area is classified as a class undetermined because most of it's undocumented or it doesn't make any sense or both. This level is really easy to get to, but it's hard to leave, and there's only been one explorer that's been communicating from this level for a while, but we'll get into that later. Most of the communication has been garbled, but the explorer has described this level as broken or backwards. And the lighting in this level is actually fluorescent darkness and not fluorescent light like you're used to, so the light from the bulbs will be black. This level is actually also completely silent, and you can't hear anything, no buzzing, nothing else, no entities, except the whispers, which come from the entity called the Denizens, which are a very weird entity that whisper to lure you deeper into the level. The louder the whispers get, the further away you are, and the further away the whispers sound, the closer you are to the Denizens, so it's opposite of how it normally would work. The explorer says that some of the whispers are actual words or phrases like she come, won't back, let go, which to me sounds like they're trying to lure you deeper and deeper into the level. So this level is pretty much a level with everything that's inverted possible. Like I said, the lights are black and not yellow or white, and the walls are white instead of any other color, and it kind of feels like that inverted filter that used to be on the iPhone. 
there's also those denizen entities that are trying to lure you to them for some reason that we don't know. It's not known where the level 1.5 actually is, but it's obviously between two levels somewhere. There aren't any bases here, and there's no known entrance or exit besides just randomly no clipping, which is actually kind of creepy because imagine just having the ability to randomly end up here just by no clipping with nothing. That's creepy. Plus, the denizens are always whispering at you, which is even more terrifying. It's also new information that that explorer, which is named Chaos Raider, is actually missing and is officially considered KIA due to lack of communications. In his last log, he mentions specifically a figure called the Mother, and said that the denizens will actually talk about this Mother character, saying things like Mother loves you or Come Child, just weird stuff. So Brugley's advice is to avoid this level at all costs, except I know you can't because you can just randomly be noclipped here, but uh, if you do get here, just try to noclip out as soon as possible, because being stuck in an inverted world where everything's upside down in different colors does not sound fun to me at all. So this level is classified as a class variable difficulty, which means that its safety and stableness changes depending on where you go inside the level. Now, according to the fandom, this level is actually a sub-level of the original Level Run For Your Life, which I've done a video on, if you are interested in that. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a terribly scary level in and of itself, where you spawn in and you have to run instantly away from a huge horde of entities. And at first glance, the first part of this sub-level looks like the normal level. It's a long hallway that's basked in a red lighting, and this entire part is pretty similar to the main level, in that there's an entity horror chasing you, and your sanity is dropping. But where it changes is that every so often, there are doors on the left or right side of the hallway that can open up to different levels, but the levels that they open up to are typically dangerous levels, not safe levels, so they're dangerous. And some of them even lead back to the main part, which is level exclamation mark. So unless you want to go back to the main level and do this entire running thing again, it's not recommended to try any of these exits. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, what does this sub-level do that sets it apart from the main level? Well, the main thing is there are extra steps and extra dangerous things that can happen to you here. There are random liquid pain puddles that you can step in, and there are some carpeted sections of the hallways that have poisonous carpet fluid inside of them. And if you lose your shoes or you walk through these areas with your bare feet or socks on, uh, that might be it for you. Because if your feet touch liquid pain or this carpet fluid, then the pain will be worse than unaliving itself. <laughs> so. That just adds on to the difficulty on top of the entity horde chasing you. There is one pretty cool thing about this level though, and is that if you run for a really, really long time, like 10 plus miles on this level, then you might find a staircase that goes up. And if you go up that staircase, you might get to the promised land, which is a thought to be exit of the back rooms itself, but it's not confirmed if it is. Some people are really thinking that it is, and I've done a video explaining all of that, so go check that out if you haven't. But if you find this staircase, I would recommend 10 out of 10 go into that staircase just to find the exit. I, it's worth it to me to try it. As you know, the main level exclamation mark isn't too long, only a few miles, but this sub-level is way longer and more confusing to run through. The good news is, is that there's these anomalous blue hallways scattered randomly throughout the level that can be randomly accessed to people. Now these don't appear to everybody and it's really unknown why they even exist, but they're pretty safe and they're a good spot to take a break from running for a second. And like I said, these hallways are blue and that's how you'll know that you ran into a safe spot. So a basic outline you can use is that a blue hall has a chance to appear every four and a half miles of running. And these blue hallways are also exits of the level because there's staircases in those that go down. And if you walk to the bottom of those staircases, then you'll be sent to a random level. There are also entities here that are unlike any entities in the back rooms. So that massive entity horde behind you that's going to be chasing you is full of the regular entities like death moths and smilers and hounds and that kind of stuff. But there are also extra entities in this sub-level. And what they do is that their only goal is to cause your sanity to drop. Like that is their entire reason for existing is to make your sanity less. 
So they're in that giant horde of entities, and you can't really get a good look at them because they're just blended in with the entire thing, but you can definitely feel the effects of losing your mind. And if you somehow get sent to this level after the previous run for your life level, then you'll be extra susceptible and more likely to go insane from these entities. But if you couple that liquid pain puddle stuff and the poisonous carpet juice along with this entity horde full of creatures that make your sanity go down, uh, that makes this level even more terrifying than the main level. It's also longer, so you have to run for further. To enter this sublevel, well, there's a 50% chance that you can get stuck here from being in level 2, or you can get here by choosing an unlocked door in the hallway of level exclamation mark, which would absolutely suck because imagine you're already running for your life and you find a door that can open finally, only for it to lead you to a longer red hallway in this level where you also have to run for your life. That'd be terrible. And you can exit the level from one of those blue hallways I talked about, or you can chance opening one of the doors to run past, but as I said earlier, you never know where that's going to lead you. It might be dangerous or it might lead you back to level exclamation mark. You can also run to the quote unquote end of the level to find that staircase that goes upwards to be taken to the promised land. But that would require running for miles and miles and honestly, I, I don't think I could do that. So I would just try a door or try to find a blue hallway. I thought this level was pretty cool and it, I thought it blended pretty well with the famous level exclamation mark. It's just like it, but it's more dangerous and it's longer. And I like how there are a couple of exits that actually lead back to the main level because you don't really find that oftentimes the sublevels that are written in the back room, so I like how that stays that way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Level 69 looks like a dark and empty infinite highway that has fog rolling at all times. Each side of the highway has massive concrete walls that seem to be infinite in height. And there's literally nothing else here. Like, that's it. The level is apparently so dangerous that you have to stay in the car when you spawn in. When you spawn in on this level, you'll spawn in in the car that you passed out in, in level 3 to get here. That's the entrance to this level, more on that later. But if you stay in this car, you'll pretty much be safe. But if you leave the car, it's dangerous. Level 69 has a very low visibility because of the fog and the darkness that's on the level since it's constantly nighttime. In order to see anything at all, you have to use either the headlights from the car or a flashlight or something. This level is pretty unique because there are specific ways that you need to navigate it. And the start of the level is pretty much the same for everyone across the board because you wake up in the car that you passed out in from level 3. Even if you somehow get here without passing out in a car on level 3, you'll still wake up inside of a random car whenever you enter the level but whatever you do like i said do not leave the car since you know it's dangerous and stuff the fog and the entities that live here seem to be kind of scared of cars except for one entity so it's pretty much a good way to scare off things if you just stay in your car and keep driving now your car itself might have broken glass or broken ac or something like that it's really just depending on the look of the person there so if you have bad luck, then you might have car problems, and if you have good luck, you won't. Driving this car physically is pretty much just like driving a car from real life, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You also don't have to worry about running out of gas, because these cars don't even have fuel tanks. Nice! So you can go full speed for as long as you want, since there's really nothing in the road, and you can just fly down the road at max speed. But there is always a risk of crashing into an entity or something like that. So pretty much you can either drive slow and waste a bunch of time, or you can drive really fast with a chance of perishing. So pick your poison. There are also hardly any supplies on this level, so the goal is to leave as soon as possible so you don't starve. The main normal entities here are Smilers and Wretches, which are extremely hostile on this level because they don't have anything else to eat. So when they see you, they, you know, they start drooling and get really aggressive. Wretches are considered to be extremely dangerous here because they can break into your car if you're parked or something like that, or if you crash into one, it could cause your car to fly off the road into the concrete wall. Just just try to avoid them. Like imagine sitting in your car and trying to take a nap and then you wake up and see one of these things. Nice. Now this level also has a level exclusive entity called the beans from above. These are very mysterious and dangerous and they're pretty much one of the main reasons if not the main reason that you should not get out of your car. Their exact body description isn't known but their legs or arms 
look like spider legs or crab legs. You can't see them from the ground, obviously, because you'll be in a car. But if you were to get out of your car, a leg might fly down from above and spear right through you and then pick you up and carry you up into the darkness. It's kind of like that thing from King Kong, if you've seen that movie. There's only been a handful of survivors from an attack, and they say that the legs feel cold, slick, and completely solid. Oh yeah, and these entities literally cannot be taken down at all. People have tried bullets, explosions, knives, nothing works on them, so. This level also has a weird phenomena that happens called the Whispers. Now this might be an entity or just a weird occurrence that happens here, but pretty much there are these negative thoughts that go through your brain while you're on the level and they try to break down your mental health. So watch out for that, I guess. The easiest and most common way to enter this level is to pass out in a car on level 3 and you'll just wake up here. To exit the level, it's pretty simple. You just have to drive really far on the road and eventually you run across a tunnel that's carved into one of the sides of the concrete walls. Now you want to make sure you're either on the right or left side of the road because if you're in the middle, there's a chance you might miss this tunnel and you don't want to do that, trust me. So once you find the tunnel, just drive through it and you can only drive there for exactly 17 hours because then and at that point, your car will break down and stop working. After it stops working, you just have to get out and you have to walk through the rest of the length of the tunnel. But don't worry though, the tunnel's safe. There's no fog or no entities or anything like that. Just a normal tunnel. And this tunnel will lead to level 11. So it's pretty much worth it. There's also one unconfirmed exit as well. Some people have said that if you pass out while being attacked by a being from above, that you'll wake up in level zero. But I'm not gonna stick around and try to test that theory. So yeah, you got an infinite highway with huge concrete walls on each side and giant spider legs that come down from the sky to attack you. Love to see it. 